Well, hello. We're glad that you've decided to spend a valuable half hour of your time with us. And this is the place that you come to learn. And, and that just means that, uh, Shannon, what are you doing? Nothing. Okay, yeah, you got me a little weirded out by this. You, you're, you're usually up to something. There you go. Complaining because you aren't satisfied with what you have. Oh, uh, I, I, I wasn't complaining. I was just observing that, you know, this is weird. But uh, as I was saying, uh, you'll hear the term big idea a, a lot around here. And a, a big idea is something that grows inside of you to change the world around you. And each month, we feature a new big idea. And, and, and this month, okay, it's driving me crazy. Shannon, what are you doing? What? You're just standing there. Yeah, I am the perfect example of this month's big idea, Corey. Really? Should I reveal it to the audience? Please. Uh, everyone stirred a drum roll on your legs. Here we go. Repeat it after Shannon. Three, two, one. Contentment. Contentment. Is deciding to be okay. It's deciding to be okay. With what you have. With what you have. But I happen to be perfectly content, Corey, as wish-free as a penniless fountain at the mall. Really? Yes, Corey. I have all I shall ever need. I am happy. I am blissful. Gladsome, even. Gladsome. Correct, Corey. You see, before you today, a perfectly content specimen of, of humanity stands. After several days of studying contentment, at this school and reading a booklet at the library, I am now completely satisfied in my own skin. Corey, like the great Abraham Lincoln once said, with malice toward none and charity toward all, because that's how I roll. <laughs> that's ridiculous. So I can stand here and just be me, all by myself, without needing anything, without wanting anything, Corey, and Hey, hang on, stop the music, stop the music! What's going on? You were almost starting to make sense there at the end. Don't you see that? Right there, the camera guy, right there, see it? Yeah, was he distracting you or something? <laughs> he has the new fitness smart band. He has the Snacker Tracker Deluxe, Corey. You have the Snacker Tracker Deluxe. It's the latest release, and it just started shipping this week. How in the world do you already have one? Look, look, Shannon, uh, you were just saying that you had learned to be content. It's, and I want it. Really? Uh, after all that talk about being happy with what you <laughs> I have? I want it. I want it. I want it. Shannon, don't you think you're just being a little silly? Uh, how much? Seriously, buddy. Hey, camera guy. How much? How much do you want for the fitness tracker? My, my friend here, Corey, he, he is made of money, and he will pay anything you want to get me that smart band. Okay, a, a lot silly. <laughs> it has a touch screen, a 3D camera, a terabyte of storage, wireless charging. It tracks your heart rate, your sleep rate, your loan rate, your caloric intake. It tells you when your favorite shows are on, Corey, and you can set it so it gives you excuses for not doing your homework. I'm telling you, it does everything but travel time. Okay, uh, I think it's time for us to travel to the end of our, our welcome segment. You and should really consider all the self-sacrifice that I, your friendly neighborhood host, have dedicated to your state of well-being. Shannon, leave him, leave him alone. I need this tracker tracker It's vital to my happiness and my well-being. Okay, okay, seriously, I, deal, okay. Heads, heads, you give me that band. Tails, I take that band off your hands. Um, your, your wrist. Oh, hey, uh, oh, uh, no, <laughs> Look at that, it's, it's tails, it's tails. Oh. Just, just, uh, I'll, I'll relieve you of that right now. Come on, give it to me. Get, give it to me. It's mine, my own, give it to me. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm very sorry about this, sir. Uh, Shannon, let's, let's go. Let's, let's get. I, I want go. it, Corey. You saw it. I won it in a fair flip I, coin toss. Won it fair and square. I think you just need a, a break. Break, Corey? I can't rest. You want to know why? I can't sleep. You want to know why? Because I have nothing to track my sleep, Corey. No food shall pass these lips until the Snacker Tracker Deluxe is mine. Okay, maybe a Kit Kat bar. I do need a break. You're right. I need one. I need a break. 
I need a Kit Kat. Give me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> okay. Break me off a piece. I, I better go check on him while you guys check out this next video. I'm the world's greatest Scottish rapper and the world's greatest prize winner. Check this out! Oh. Isn't that something? I won it at our town's fall festival. And, and, and let me tell you, it wasn't easy. I, I can't wait to show it to Seamus, huh? Oh, Seamus, 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 check out what I won! It's the most awesome prize at the fall. Seamus, what, what, what you got there? I. You won that as a, as a prize at the Fall Festival? That, that, that giant, big, huge prize? Aye! What? Uh, this? this it's, 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 it's nothing. It's just a silly little trinket that I uh, won at the Fall Festival. Aye! I said I won it at the Fall Festival! But it's nothing. It doesn't really mean all that much to me. It's just, you, you know. What do you mean? What, what, I looked happy? Well, that was before you walked in here with that giant grizzly bear. Aye, aye. What are you saying? Aye. You're saying this prize is the perfect thing for me because I worked so hard to get it and it made me happy and I shouldn't compare what I have to what others have saved. That's what I thought you said! You're right! Uh, it does make me happy! Uh, you make me so happy, little bear! I don't know. But, <laughs> it does make me happy, and I should be content with that. Thank you, friend. Let's rap about it. Kick it! Here we go! I thought I won the ultimate prize! Then Shiva showed up with a big surprise! At first I felt some real resentment. <laughs> but then Seamus taught me that it's okay because even though I won a smaller prize and he won a larger prize, I needed to be okay with what I had and, and, and that's contentment. Word. All right, hey, hey, let's take our prizes on parade. Ready? Here we go. Hey, that was fun. Do that to me. Do that to me. Hello everyone, my name is Tucker, and I have one question for all you in the audience. Who wants to play a game? Alright, this is exciting. We have a totally original game called The Price is Correct. And this month we're talking all about contentment. Everyone repeat this after me. Contentment. Deciding to be happy with what you have. That's right. You know, no matter what you have, when you see something new, you might be tempted to become discontent with what you have. That's why it's important to know just how valuable it is to decide to be happy. It's also important in this game to know just how valuable these items are. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna show you one picture at a time and ask you if you think it is more or less than the amount I say. You give a thumbs up for more and a thumbs down for less. Does that make sense? Awesome. So our first item is a monster themed pencil pouch. Do you guys think it's more or less than $6? So I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to get your thumbs ready, and this monster themed pouch is actually $5.88, so it's less than $6. Let's try another one. Our second item is a locking Batman supply case. Do you guys think it's more or less than $10? Give you a couple seconds to get those thumbs ready, and this locking Batman supply case is actually $9.99, so it's less than $10. You guys should have had your thumbs down. All right, let's try a third one. Our third item is a Paw Patrol soft lunchbox. Do you guys think it is more or less than $4? Again, give you a couple seconds to figure it out and put in your guesses. And our Paw Patrol lunchbox is actually $5, so it's more than $4. I hope you had your thumbs up for that one. All right, let's see our last one. 
I bet most of you are very familiar with this one. This is a battery powered pencil sharpener. Do you think it is more or less than $3? So I had a couple of these in my uh, elementary school days. And this battery powered pencil sharpener is $4.97. This is more than $3. Thumbs up for this one. You guys did awesome. Yeah, I just kind of jiggle it a little bit. It should be on. All right, cool. You know, I need a new camera. Like, really need a new camera. This one's working great now. Yeah, but I always run out of memory with on this uh, one and the focus. Rolling. And I'm Lawson, and I've got a fantastic story to tell all you guys out there in Lawson watching land. I heard it from my friend who has this neighbor kid named Elijah. Elijah gets a whole week of vacation for fall break, and all of his friends are doing amazing things. Like Jose and his family are going to the beach and they're gonna go scuba diving with the dolphins. <laughs> Nick and his family are going to Wonder World, where he's gonna ride the Thrillster like 587 times at 299 miles an hour. And then Ricky and his family are going to Yellowstone Park where they're gonna see a giant geyser that goes all the way up to the moon. So, Elijah wants to know, what are we doing for fall break? And his mom says, your father and I, we have to work. But his dad says that he can take a day off work and they can go to the park and jump in piles of leaves. <laughs> Elijah can't believe how unfair his parents are being while all of his friends get to do all this super cool, amazing stuff. And so then he shouts, you're being so mean. And then he stomps off like an elephant, or a pack of dinosaurs during an earthquake. And Elijah spends three whole hours mourning the death of his fall break. And he says, what am I supposed to do for a whole week? And his mom says, well, what do you want to do? And then Elijah finds his Z-Box 1080. And he remembers that he hasn't played Space Busters in forever. Plus, he finds a super cool book that his aunt gave him about climbing Mount Everest, which he hasn't even explored yet. And he's been dying to build a ramp for his dirt bike. And then he goes to his mom and he says he's gonna need way more than a week to do all this super cool stuff, cause this is gonna be the best fall break ever. And his mom promises to provide as many provisions as possible. And Elijah is so excited that he blasts off right then and there. And he cuts out a giant piece of moon cheese to bring back to all of his friends. So kids, remember, always be prepared for unexpected space travel. And that contentment is deciding to be okay with what you have. This isn't green. Moon cheese is supposed to be green. Hmm. Still tastes good though. Ooh, can you jiggle it a little bit? Just kind of hit it. Oh, good. See you guys next time. Hey everyone, I'm so excited to be here with you today to talk about one of my favorite big ideas. So repeat this after me. Contentment, deciding to be happy with what you have. That's right. Okay, you know, everyone here has some things and everyone here wants some things. In fact, let's talk about some of those things right now. On the count of three, I want you to shout out the thing you want the most. Maybe it's a video game, maybe it's an awesome toy, or it's something for your house or your room. Let's shout it out on three. Ready? One, two, three. Virtual reality goggles! That's funny. That last one sounded like Andrew. That's because it was me, Melissa. See? Virtual reality. What are you wearing? <sighs> Disappointment, that's what. Mm -hmm. Melissa, listen, I've really been trying to practice the big idea of contentment. Like, really, 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 really trying for a long, long, long time. You mean for the last, like, 10 minutes? Yeah, and since then, and it's just too hard. Listen, I was totally content, I was really working on it, but then I was scrolling through my InstaFace page and I saw this ad for these virtual reality goggles. Um, you put them on and you can literally go anywhere. They're amazing. Oh. So then what's this? 
Oh, it, it was me trying to be content. All I had was a sleep mask, so I put it on and I tried to use my crazy imagination and I just ran into stuff. Um, Andrew, you know we're talking to the kids about contentment. It's deciding to be happy with what you have. Yeah, and I would decide to be happy if I had the awesome set of goggles. You know, Andrew, you and I have been friends for a while. Um, what if we took a stroll down memory lane together to just see if how you think you'd feel after getting those goggles is how you'd actually feel? How, how would we do that? Through the power of imagination and scripted comedy. Why don't you head backstage for me? Okay. It's funny how things change. The stuff people wanted a few years ago is not exactly the stuff you'd want today. As I said, I've known Andrew for a long time, so let's go back a few years to when Andrew and I were in college. He was obsessed with retro stuff and couldn't do any of his classes until he got this old retro video game that he was hoping for. He had some crazy hair in college. Man, Melissa, you'll never believe it. I found this super awesome retro video game at an antique store. This is the best. You want to go play? Mm, no, I'm, I'm good. Thanks, Andrew. Oh, this is the best. I'm just so happy. Well, Obviously, that video game didn't keep him happy forever. So let's go a little further back when Andrew's dad introduced him to his favorite John Travolta movies. Ah, 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 staring a lot, staring a lot. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, my dad showed me this awesome movie and I realized that my sole purpose in life is to bring disco back. So, I got oh. this awesome outfit. Can you believe it? I have never been so happy. Let's dance. You, um, you, you got it. Go ahead. Me? Get someone out. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, all you. Uh, uh, staring a lot, staring a lot. How about we go a little further back? And then there's Tickle Me Elmo. Back in 1996, this was the toy that every kid wanted under the Christmas tree. It was crazy. They completely sold out right after Thanksgiving. People would actually chase delivery trucks trying to get their hands on one. People even got injured as they stampeded to get them in the stores. I think they got a little carried away, don't you? Yeah, but um, Andrew was excited. <laughs> I'm so tickled. Mom called and said she got me the new Elmo. So there's a little trip down memory lane with Andrew. You know, for you it might be something else. You might think you'd be happier if you had a certain thing. Or you might think you'd be happier if you could go to a certain place. Or you might think you'd be happier if you could do something or know someone. It doesn't matter what you think would make you happy. The question is, what if it was really all up to you? What if you didn't have to wait for a certain situation or a certain thing to come along for you to be happy? Hey, Melissa. Hey, Andrew, how was the trip down memory lane? It was pretty good. You know, it's funny, all those things seemed so important back then. Um, kids like me felt like we had to have them. We talked about them all the time. We dreamed about them too. Right. But wait, where are all those old game systems now? Where are those bizarre clothes that seemed so trendy at the time? Whatever happened to Tickle Me Elmo? Uh, well, honestly, all those things probably just sitting in a closet somewhere gathering dust. And, well, it probably don't work very well if they work at all. The truth is, most of them probably got thrown in the garbage. So, wait, are you... Are you saying that's bad stuff? Is it bad to have that stuff? No, it's not that having stuff is bad. Stuff can even make you happy for a while. But stuff, situations, circumstances, even people can't keep you happy. Eventually, the stuff you have will break, or a person will let you down, or a situation will change. So basically, no matter what, you're going to end up being unhappy. No, Andrew, are you familiar with Benjamin Franklin? Sure, yeah, he was in the Night of the Museum, right? He said this about this month's big idea of, con of contentment. Contentment makes poor men rich. Discontent makes rich men poor. Hmm. Andrew, it really comes down to a choice. So you're saying if we want to make the smart decision, we decide now to be happy. We realize hmm. that stuff, circumstances, and people can't steal our happiness. We give it away when we choose to be discontent. That's right. That's contentment. 
choosing to be happy with what you've got. Awesome. I practice harder than anyone. I have been in class longer than Trina. I can kick higher than Trina. My extension is a lot better. Everyone thinks I dance better than her. I do not understand why she is on the first row and I'm on the second row. At one of our last rehearsals, Miss Bonnie moved me back. She didn't even say why. People are coming to see me tonight, and now I'll be on the second row. It's not fair. If no one can even see me, then what's the point of dancing at all? I'm sorry. Help me to have a great attitude for the recital. You know, I guess there's always someone watching. Love, Lauren. Hey guys, it's Keith here, and I want to tell you that we've had some fun today talking about our big idea of contentment. It's deciding to be happy with what you have. But right now, we want to talk about something else that's very important. It's very important to me because not only did it happen to me, but I also participated in it. Did you know that it's a number that's extremely valuable for you to learn? 160,000. You may have heard of us talk about this number before, but it stands for the number of kids that stay at home every single day from being bullied. We've talked about how important our big three are to helping lower that number, and hopefully one day we'll lower it to zero. But what does contentment have to do with bullying? How does putting this big idea to work inside of us help change the world around us when it comes to this big problem? Well, quite simply, it comes down to a decision. And I want to show you another number. 160,000 stay home every day from school because they're afraid of being bullied. But 30% of kids admit that they have bullied someone before. That means almost one out of three kids has been a bully. But why? When you look at all these kids, you might wonder what would make them decide to bully someone else. See, that's where our big idea this month comes into play. Because contentment is a decision. And one of the smartest decisions that you can make in life is to decide to be happy specifically about who you are and what makes you unique. The truth is, while people may bully for a lot of different reasons, one reason why many people bully is because they're unhappy with who they are. They think that they can make themselves feel better about themselves if they tear someone else down. If we want to maximize our potential, it starts by being happy about who you are. And that makes you unique. Contentment is deciding to be happy with what makes you unique and different. You may look different, sound different, or even act different than other people, but that's okay. If you want someone to treat others right, and if you want to treat others right, it starts by realizing that you are a valuable person, and so in this person, or is this person next to you valuable? You don't have to change or pretend to be something that you're not. And you don't have to make someone else feel bad or allow others to make you feel bad for what makes you unique. When you make that simple decision, you remove yourself from being someone who will bully another person. You decide that you're going to do what you can to help count down to zero. You guys have been an incredible audience this month. And guess what? We'll see you next month. Try to sell me things from bicycles to shiny rings. Uh -huh. They say, Hey, check out this brand new fan. It's something that you gotta have. 
the kind of make me wanna laugh. Cause contentment isn't found in possessions. I think they've got the wrong impression. I try to focus my attention on the fact that I'm blessed and everything I've got is all I need. You take a step back. Don't watch out, you just might miss it. There's more to life than the eye can see. Look inside, you got all you need. 